Hello students and welcome to lecture 3 of Classifying Matter. Let's first discuss how to classify matter in terms of basic categories. The two main categories of matter are pure substances and mixtures. And generally the two types of pure substances are elements and compounds where you have just one type of matter and um, uniform properties all throughout and a uniform composition throughout. On the other hand, a mixture, the two types of mixtures are homogeneous and heterogeneous. And they consist of two or more different types of matter throughout. So there are different types of matter throughout, they have different compositions throughout, and generally they'll have different properties throughout. All right, how you classify matter is generally based on two factors. First, is the composition uniform? And secondly, the properties of the sample throughout the sample. If the composition is uniform and the properties are the same throughout, you usually have a substance. But if the composition is different throughout and you have different properties throughout, then it's usually a mixture. All right. Now that I've gone into that, now let's uh, discuss matter really quickly. The three types of homogeneous matter are elements, compounds, and homogeneous mixtures, typically called solutions. All right, and the type of the one type of heterogeneous matter is a heterogeneous mixture. Sometimes it's called a colloid, but it can also be called a suspension. All right, so first let's discuss pure substances. So first make sure you write the definition of pure substance in the lines provided. A pure substance is matter that has a fixed composition or the composition is the same when it's the same type of substance and distinct physical and chemical properties that are uniform throughout. All right, so it has the same composition every time you encounter that substance. For example, water will always have two hydrogens and one oxygen and um, aluminum will always have one aluminum atom. And also the properties, the physical and chemical properties are distinct and uniform throughout. So everywhere where you have oxygen molecules in this particle diagram box, the particles um, are gases throughout that are transparent. Everywhere throughout here, aluminum is a silvery kind of metal throughout. Everywhere for water, it's clear and liquid throughout. So that's what I mean by distinct physical and chemical properties. And obviously the composition I just covered in terms of having the same number every time. The two types of substances are elements and compounds. All right, so now what I want you to do is go down to your graphic organizer and start filling this out for elements, which is the first row, and compounds, which is the second row, and include these particle diagrams in your um, chart. So elements are substances that have only one type of atom. So you only have one type of atom, and because it only consists of one type of atom, elements are the simplest kind of matter, and since they're the simplest kind of matter, elements cannot be broken down or decomposed by chemical means because they only have one type of atom or sometimes one type of molecule, right? But since they're only one type, they cannot be broken down or decomposed further, and they cannot be simplified further by chemical means, because it's already as simple as it can be. In terms of a particle diagram box, what it will look like is you should write under your um, two drawings that you're about to do, same color and same pattern, all right? So for example here, for an oxygen molecule, which is the chemical formula O2, each oxygen molecule is represented by two of the same atom of the same element oxygen, so two red oxygen atoms attached to one another to make an oxygen molecule or O2. And notice here that the unit repeats, and all throughout this box, you know that this is the element O2 or oxygen, because it has the same color, which is red, and the same pattern throughout, which is two red atoms attached to each other to make a molecule that repeats. All right, same for aluminum or Al, where it's just a singular Al atom each. You'll notice that um, each aluminum atom is re represented by a gray sphere to represent one singular aluminum atom, right? So you have the same color throughout, which is all gray everywhere, and you have the same pattern where each aluminum unit of aluminum is represented by um, a single gray sphere for each uh, atom of aluminum, okay? In terms of a symbol for an element, generally you know that you have an element when you have only one capital letter. These are generally found in the periodic table or on table S. So I want you to turn to your packet where it says table S and look for the um, elements. For example, AL is one capital letter, so it's an element, aluminum. AG is one capital letter, so it's an element, silver. XE is one capital letter, so it's an element, xenon. And O2, even though as a subscript here, it's a molecule, but it has one capital letter O, so you know that that is also an element, oxygen specifically an oxygen molecule. All right, so in a nutshell, elements consist of only one type of atom or sometimes one type of molecule, same color and same pattern for the particle diagrams, and the symbol is only one capital letter. Since you have only one type of atom or molecule, it cannot be decomposed or broken down by chemical means because it's the simplest type of substance you can have. In terms of the names of elements, some names of elements come from English, but others come from other languages. But the names of elements are listed on table S. So if you find the name of a substance and you have to determine whether it's an element or a compound, 
if the name of the substance is on table S, it will be an element. For example, aluminum, that name is on table S. And since table S only lists elements, aluminum is an element. Same thing with carbon, it's listed on table S, so it's an element. Sulfur also is only listed on table S, so it is an element, right? And one thing I want you to know is even though I said it's only one type of atom, uh, I want you to kind of revise that definition because that can also be one type of molecule. Remember, elements can exist as molecules, such as in the case of O2 or an oxygen molecule here. Where in the molecule, we remember, we have two or more of the same type of atoms sometimes bonded together. We know molecules can be different, but when it's an element, it's always the same type of molecule. If the elements are different, then you'll get something called a compound, which we'll cover next. So next we have compounds, and compounds are substances with two or more atoms of different elements chemically combined together in fixed ratios by mass. So let's break this definition down, basically. Um, by fixed ratios by mass, I mean that if you have a specific compound, it must always have the same number of atoms of each element. For example, water must always be one oxygen bonded to two hydrogens. It can't be anything else, because if you change the amounts of oxygens and hydrogens, it's no longer water. All right, for carbon monoxide, the fixed ratio is always one carbon and one oxygen, because that is what makes it carbon monoxide, one carbon, one oxygen. So that's what I mean by fixed ratio. Whoops, sorry about that. So now that we've covered that part of the definition, um, since so compounds are substances with two or more different types of atoms of different elements chemically combined in fixed ratios by mass, they can be broken down and reversed chemically. Because compounds consist of different elements, they can be broken down chemically into simpler substances. Specifically, they can be broken down into simpler elements that made them up. Since they're combined chemically, they can be broken down backwards into the elements that made them up, all right? One more thing I want you to know about compounds is that the properties of the elements that made them up will always change. And that's because um, when, uh, basically, compounds combine chemically, and since compounds combine chemically, you know it's a chemical change. And based on what we learned earlier, we know when a chemical change occurs, the composition changes, so therefore the physical and chemical properties must change as well. So since compounds consist of elements chemically combining, the properties of the elements change since they're technically undergoing a chemical change. All right, in terms of a particle diagram, how you can tell that you have a compound based on its particle diagram is if you have different colors attached, representing different atoms of different elements, but the same pattern repeating. The reason why this makes sense is because the different colors attached represent different atoms of different elements chemically combined, but the same pattern mean, represents the fact that compounds are uniform as all substances tend to be. All right, so for example here, um, a water molecule's particle diagram is represented here by the fact that there are different colors attached. Specifically, you have one red oxygen attached to two hydrogens to represent the compound water, right? So that represents the compound water. And the fact that the pattern is repeated and the same throughout represents the uniform nature of what a compound should be. Similar idea with uh, this particle diagram. One black attached to one red represents different atoms being attached. Specifically, one black carbon is attached to one red oxygen to make the molecule carbon monoxide. And the fact that they repeat and have the same pattern throughout represents the fact that carbon monoxide um, is uniform as all compounds should tend to be. All right. Now, in terms of a symbol, you can tell you have a compound based on the chemical symbol if you have at least two capital letters. For example, H2O has two capital letters, H and O, so that tells you that this is a compound. CO is also a compound because you have two capital letters, C and O. Right, so those, since you have two capital letters in each of these, at least two capital letters in each of these, you know you have a compound. Um, now, in terms of a name, if the substance that you're considering has a chemist chemistry-like name that's not listed on table S, then you'll know you have a compound. For example, ammonia is a chemistry name that's not listed on table S, so it's a compound. Same thing with methane, it's a chemistry name not listed on table S, so it's a compound. And I switched this last example, nitrogen dioxide is a chemistry name not listed on table S, so it's also a compound. So now let's go over some examples that may help you with the homework. Um, substances like NO and methane are considered compounds for the following reasons. They have two or more different elements combined in fixed ratios by mass, and furthermore, they can be broken down chemically. Another thing you might want to know for your homework questions is also that the properties of the elements change as these compounds form since they're chemically combined, and technically it's a chemical change. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. Just as an aside and in addition to these notes, remember that compounds have two or more, I should add in, different elements. Someone write D-I-F-F -F for different different elements combined in fixed ratios by mass, okay?
Finally, let's discuss mixtures. Mixtures are physical combinations of two or more substances in varying ratios by mass, where each substance retains or keeps its chemical identity and properties. This makes sense since the composition doesn't change if the substances combine physically. The two types of mixtures are heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. All right, uh, particle diagrams of mixtures typically have different patterns that are somehow visibly separate. We'll see that in a minute. Now, an example of a mixture is brass called um, an alloy, which is a homogeneous mixture of a metal, which you'll learn later. This will help you with one of your homework questions, so make sure you pay attention to this. Um, in brass, zinc composition uh, varies from 5 to 40 percent, so that makes it a mixture since its composition by mass of zinc varies. So that'll help you with one of your homework questions. All right, now there are two types of mixtures. The first type of mixture is a homogeneous mixture, usually called a solution even though not always, but you'll learn more about that later. And a homogeneous mixture is um, a mixture where substances combine physically with an even distribution of particles, and that therefore leads to a relatively uniform appearance, or, or almost looks the same throughout even though it's a mixture. All right, for example, air is a homogeneous mixture because it um, appears uniform, but actually it's a mixture and it contains molecules of different substances. Specifically, it contains molecules of the different elements, nitrogen and oxygen. In addition to that, it also contains atoms of elements like argon, and in addition to that, it also contains compounds, which we learned earlier, right? Sugar water is also a homogeneous mixture specifically called dissolution because the sugar and water molecules combine physically with particles being evenly distributed. So sugar almost looks a bit like water after dissolving, even though it's technically sugar um, physically mixed with water. This dissolving phenomenon always also applies to um, NaCl AQ, where the AQ is an a represents aqueous solution and, and NaCl represents a compound sodium chloride. So this together is an aqueous solution of sodium chloride, all right, or salt in water. All right, um, CH3OH is an alcohol solution because CH3OH is the compound alcohol and AQ means it's an aqueous solution or homogeneous mixture where they mix together and they appear almost like one thing even though it's a mixture. And the reason why they appear almost uniform is because the particles have evenly distributed, but in reality it's a mixture where the substance is actually physically combined, okay? Um, now, homogeneous mixtures particle diagrams are represented by different substances, which are elements um, and or compounds physically combined but visibly separate. In addition to that, um, how you know it's a homogeneous mixture, not a heterogeneous one, is the particles are evenly distributed or almost paired up in a one-to-one -one ratio. In this first diagram, the water molecule, which was represented by one red oxygen atom attached to two white hydrogen atoms, and the carbon monoxide molecule, one red uh, oxygen atom attached to one black carbon atom consists of different patterns that are separate. So that, first of all, makes them a mixture. But they're specifically a, a homogeneous mixture because the particles are distributed evenly in an almost one-to-one -one ratio. This goes with this and that goes with that. So since they're distinct patterns, they're a mixture, but they're homogeneous because the particles are distributed evenly almost in a one-to-one -one pattern, making this a homogeneous mixture. All right? A generic particle diagram of another homogeneous mixture shown here where you have two distinct patterns. One molecule with uh, two yellow atoms attached to one another to represent element A. Let's call it an one atom represented by one brown atom here to represent, let's call it element B. So that makes them a mixture since they're two distinct patterns. But since they distribute evenly and pair up in almost like a one-to-one -one pattern, a one-to-one -one ratio, sorry, that makes this a homogeneous mixture specifically because they're distributed evenly in almost a one-to-one -one ratio while their patterns are separate. Putting that together, that makes a homogeneous mixture where the particles are evenly distributed, okay? Now, a heterogeneous mixture is a mixture where substances combine physically with an uneven distribution of particles. Therefore, this leads to the components being visibly distinct or looking different and a non-uniform appearance, all right? Since it's not 100% sorted and mixed together. So it looks non-uniform and it looks visibly separate and different. For example, salad is a heterogeneous mixture because you can tell apart tomatoes from lettuce. Um, a methane water mixture also, um, you can tell apart the methane from the water. Also, sand and water is another example since sand and water have an uneven particle distribution and you can tell apart the sand from water, mainly based on the color. Oil and water is yet another example since oil and water don't mix with one another, so they have an uneven particle distribution and you can tell apart oil from water if you made an oil and water mixture, okay? Now, heterogeneous mixtures particle diagrams are represented by different substances, typically elements or compounds, physically combined, but visibly separate. 
um, with particles unevenly distributed, almost like they're in layers, as you can see here. So in this first diagram, the compound water represented by one red oxygen attached to two white hydrogens um, and the element copper represented by one green Cu atom consist of patterns that are separate, so they're a mixture. And also, since they're in layers rather than paired up one to one, that specifically makes this a heterogeneous mixture where um, it appears the different substances appear visibly separate. Diagram two also shows two distinct patterns. The compound water represented by one red oxygen attached to two white hydrogens to make a molecule and the compound methane shown by one black carbon atom attached to four, four white hydrogen atoms to make a molecule. And since they specifically distribute in uneven layers, that makes the particle diagram a diagram of a heterogeneous mixture. Okay. So before we move on, please make sure you write down what heterogeneous and homogeneous mixture particle diagrams look like. Homogeneous mixture particle diagrams have distinct patterns um, where substances pair up in a one-to-one -one ratio. All right, on the other hand, heterogeneous mixture particle diagrams have distinct patterns that are placed in what look like separate layers. All right, finally, let's discuss how to identify homogeneous mixtures. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures where a solid, liquid, or gas combines physically with another substance, usually water, distributing particles evenly and therefore usually giving what looks like a uniform appearance even though it's a mixture. All right, the notation for solutions is a symbol for um, the substance, typically an element or a compound, followed by AQ in parentheses. The AQ in parentheses here means that the substance dissolves in water to form a homogeneous mixture. For example, COAQ means that the compound CO or carbon monoxide dissolves in water to form a homogeneous mixture, specifically a solution of CO or carbon monoxide. NaCl AQ, on the other hand, means the ionic compound NaCl or sodium chloride dissolves completely in water to form a homogeneous mixture, specifically a solution of um, NaCl or a solution of sodium chloride. All right, finally, please complete these homework question, the homework questions on the back of the first page um, and use tables which is attached to the packet to help you. Thanks, see you tomorrow.